Well, hi there. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking a little bit about marginal revenue and marginal cost and with our real goal of focusing on profit. Um, and so my, my sheet here actually should say marginal revenue, marginal cost and profit, um, because that's really the most important thing that we're going to be interested in when we talk about firms. So let's jump right in. Revenue, costs and profit. Now, the first thing to remember is that we learned about revenue in unit two when we learned that total revenue is just the firm's income from selling all its units. And we usually just say it's the price times the quantity. And we learned that you could maximize total revenue at the unit elastic point of a demand curve. And then we went, Meh, that's about it. What we really actually want to focus on is this thing called marginal revenue. And just remember that each time you see that word marginal, it just means additional. So this is the additional revenue from selling an additional product, which Initially, you might think to yourself and say, well, Gloss, if the product is priced at, say, $7 and I sold another one, wouldn't that be the additional revenue? Yeah, it would be. You're getting ahead of yourself just a little bit, though. Um, but yeah, it's actually just that simple. In a perfectly competitive market, the additional revenue is the price. Now, the second idea is going to be what we call marginal cost. And we learned in the last unit as well, or sorry, in the last video, uh, that total cost is really just the sum of the fixed and variable costs. Marginal cost is one additional idea. This is the idea of what's the additional cost of producing that unit. So it's not like saying how much did the worker cost, it's how much did the unit cost us to produce? And so the additional cost to produce an additional unit of output. Another way that we can say that is that that's equal to the change in total cost over the change in output, right? And so we would normally say, well, if output's one, the additional cost of an additional unit of output. This one is the change in total revenue associated with a change in output. And again, you know, if you just think to yourself, Gloss, I sold it for $7. Well, that added seven to the revenue and you had additional one unit of output. So your total revenue change was seven. That means your marginal revenue was seven. So they are really pretty that just that simple. They are the rate of change of the total over the rate of change of the output. Now, Profit is just pretty straightforward as well. Total revenue minus total cost is profit. This symbol is a capital PI, and that's a kind of traditional symbol for profit in this class. Why? Well, because we don't use P for profit. We already used it for price. And what we're going to find is the most important rule in all of microeconomics, and I'm putting a box around it, the quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, or as close as you can get, where marginal revenue is still greater than or equal to marginal cost. That is what we call the profit maximizing. Here, let me focus just a shade. Uh, that's the profit maximizing quantity of output. And we're going to find that here when we do this data table. So let's get started on this table showing TR, MRTC, MC, and profit. And notice the quantity of units. This is the output column. So I'm just going to put output you can also call this total product. And the price of the good is going to be five bucks for every single unit. We're not going to change the price every single time. And so the total revenue is just price times the quantity. We've got five, 10, 15. I think you could do the rest here, 35. Marginal revenue, well, let's see. What's the additional revenue from selling an additional unit of output? We may have spoiled the surprise already. Five, five, five. And so for a perfectly competitive firm, Price is the same as marginal revenue. That's going to be important. Now, ooh, loud car, it's really exciting. Okay, sorry, distracted by a squirrel. Um, marginal cost. Let's do that calculation because that one's just also, what's the change in total cost divided by the change in output? Well, again, we're just changing output by one every single time, so that's kind of easy. The change in cost here from the zeroth to the first unit, well, one, nine, to, so it's just one, right? Notice that it's not inclusive of that original because well, what does this tell us? That would be that the fixed cost was $9. So then we go, okay, what's the cost of the second one? Two, three, four, five, six, and 15. It's kind of a weird jump, um, but we can kind of see that it like starts low and then goes zooms upwards. Right? It actually, the rate of change increases very quickly. And now we're going to actually just compare and see where does marginal cost equal marginal revenue. And again, this is really best if you can find where they're equal. But if they aren't, like if the, the two columns don't line up, you would want to pick the last one where the revenue is bigger than the cost. That's just the idea of marginal analysis. Here what we're doing is saying it's worth it to produce a unit if the marginal revenue is bigger than the marginal cost. And it's worth it to continue to produce units up until the point where they're equal each other. 
So we'll kind of compare here, marginal revenue 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.5, ah, 5 and 5. Now here, they equal each other exactly. Now I wouldn't want to produce this next unit. And the reason I don't want to produce the sixth unit is because the cost is $6 to produce that unit. I'm only making $5 of revenue. I wouldn't want to stop with the fourth unit because, well, I, my marginal cost is four here and my marginal revenue is five. I could actually gain by producing that fifth unit. And you might be looking at this and going, but how can that, how can that be? How could I actually be gaining if the marginal cost and the marginal revenue of the fifth unit is the same? What's actually happening is the gain is occurring as you're moving from the fourth to the fifth unit. And so actually there is some profit to be made as you continue to produce up until where MR equals MC. So we're going to put a star next to this one, MR equals MC, and we're going to calculate these profit columns and see if it actually holds true. Hopefully it does, fingers crossed. First is total revenue minus total cost. And so we said zero to nine, well, that gives you negative nine. So that's clearly the bad spot to stop in. You don't want to stop and not produce anything. Five minus 10 is negative five. 10 minus 12 is negative two. Oh boy. 15 minus 15, now we're firms breaking even. 20 minus 19 is one. 25 minus 24 is one, 30 minus 30 is zero, and 35 minus 45 is negative 10. Now, ah, I like that the numbers ended up being this way, and that's because you can see here, we actually maximize profit at two different quantities here, but we would still actually say you'd wanna prefer the fifth one. And that's because number one, these marginal cost numbers are made up and they don't really reflect what reality is gonna look like. And typically what you're gonna find is that actually this marginal cost value would be a little bit different from where they are. And so you wouldn't end up with ties. But second, you want bigger and you're going to continue to get bigger so long as you haven't fulfilled the MR equals MC. And so basically this firm doesn't necessarily know when it goes from four to five, oh, that is going to be the equal point. They just produce it and they say, oh, okay, we're still maximizing profit where we, we used to be. We shouldn't produce another one. So it's kind of like a helpful way to say like, okay, we've come this far. Sure, the profit stayed the same, but this also tells us we definitely shouldn't make the next one um, because it actually costs us a dollar and we lose a dollar of profit if we produce the sixth unit. So we want to go ahead and produce five units. That's where MR equals MC or as close as we can get without marginal cost being larger. Now we're going to draw a graph showing what this stuff looks like. And we're going to put some, some lines on here. We're going to put marginal revenue, marginal cost, and supply and demand. And we see there's two spots. There's market and firm. Well, we've already drawn market graphs a zillion times in this class. These are supply and demand. And so we start with supply and demand. And supply and demand from this graph right up here tells us the price is five, five bucks. And now we're going to draw a second graph. And this second graph is for the firm market firm. And this is from the firm's perspective of what's happening. Now, from the firm's perspective, they look at it and they go, okay, we've got all this here straight across at $5 because that's where we're getting this from. That's our marginal revenue. So the firm's marginal revenue curve is a horizontal line. But in addition, the firm knows that there are so many buyers and sellers out here in the bigger market that they can't raise their price over five bucks. Why? Because if they do, all of their customers are just going to go somewhere else in the market. One of our assumptions of the market is that there are so many producers and, and, and buyers that no one of them can really affect the price. And so if this firm decided to raise its price, all of its customers would just go to a different business. Now, that's telling us then that the willingness and ability of people to buy this firm's product of quantity, and again, this is what kind of we're looking at here, is this firm's quantity of products. So maybe this is in the dozens or hundreds, and this might be in the tens of thousands quantity over here. Well, this tells us that this is the demand for this curves for this firm's products. So the marginal revenue equals the demand curve. If the whoops, if somebody tried to charge a dollar more, they lose all their customers. That's a perfectly elastic demand curve. It's infinitely responsive. So we have a perfectly elastic demand curve for the firm's products. I'm going to put a little F there. That's the demand curve that the firm sees. It's also the average revenue, and we didn't really talk about average revenue, but it's just like, what's the average amount of revenue that comes per unit? It happens to be the same value, and that's equal to the price that the firm charges. Now, I know that these Fs throw this off a little bit, but typically this is called Mr. DARP. 
Mr. Dark. And the AR is really just there to kind of help you with, with the acronym. But the demand curve, the price, the marginal revenue, those are all the same thing for this type of a firm. And it's because this firm has to take its price from the market. So it is conventional to draw this picture to the right of the picture on the left. Is it saying like this price that's set in the market is moving over to this firm? Now we've done marginal revenue, we've done supply and demand, we're going to put a marginal cost curve on here. And the marginal cost curve that's here is a little bit wonky. What really happens with marginal cost is that it's actually kind of a mirror inversion on the x-axis of our product curve. And so what we're going to find is that it goes down and then back up again marginal cost. And we'll identify the point where they should produce is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost marginal revenue equals marginal cost, cost, and that's the quantity that the firm should produce to maximize profit, um, is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. One last thing we want to throw on this graph and then we're done, is that the marginal cost curve is the firm's supply curve. So the firm is going to produce where its demand and supply curves intercept, just like in the market, we would expect the combined aggregate of all the buyers and all the sellers, they would end up transacting at where supply and demand intercept. So this gives you a quick overview of profit, marginal revenue, and cost. It's the most important rule in all of microeconomics, so I'm glad you took a look at it. I'll see you next time.